This is the Frank and Friends Show. Hi there, I'm Frank Murphy. And I'm Mitch Moore. Welcome back, Mitch. Thank you. I've run out of Mitch and Moore puns. I, I was going to ask you about that. I don't have any right now. Okay. Now, I have a formula for creating them, but I don't have any. Because the first episode that I was here, you called it the Moore you know, which I play on my last name, and also the old NBC, you know, da 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 da. Right, right. The more you know. Yeah. And then last time, the, it was called the Mitch is back, which I had thought of before your first visit. So I was, I was, you know, champing at the bit to use that one because I can't be back until I've been here once. Absolutely right. right. So I, I, I have you come. So do you have a I clever have, title for the third? No, appearance? I was hoping something would organically come out of the show that maybe yeah. is not a Mitch or a Moore reference because I yeah. figured it's you know if you're going to be here more than twice. Then, you know, it's like any other episode, any other guest host, where it's really more about what the show's about than, you know, the fact that you're here. Yeah. So no offense to that, but I'm, we, I mean, you can find rhymes for Mitch and rhymes for Moore, and that's basically the, the, what we do, <laughs> is you have, you, I write down, you think of what all the rhymes, and then you think of things that are associated with that, and you swap the letters. It's just a formula. Yeah. But it's funny. It makes it sound funny. So this is the Frank and Friends Show. We've got a uh, YouTubes, and we'd like you to subscribe to that. And we've got uh, audio on the uh, podcast apps. Our merch, um, we appreciate the merch. This is now, this cu mug is empty. There's no, nothing, no mug. Uh, because, no water in the mug. Because we have, uh, at Mitch's request, we are breaking in the pint glasses. Cheers. With uh, just water. It's a lot of gin. Well, it could be. <laughs> but as I uh, will chug the whole thing by the end of the show, we'll find out exactly how gin it is. <laughs> the New York Times crossword puzzle the other day was about... Uh, do you do that regularly? I do, I do. Oh, so I shouldn't tell you. It was about a martini-themed puzzle. As you can... T so I... But I um, come from such an alcohol-based family that <laughs> I had... <laughs> I love that term. <laughs> I had no difficulty. Oh, mm, gin, of course. Mm, I know that one. Three-letter word. Yes. Mm, yeah. I guess we don't use the term drunk anymore. We're just it's alcohol based. I like that. That's, I'm very alcohol based. So that is, uh, uh, by the way, the uh, the merch, including the the gin glasses over here, or as I'll still call them, the pint glasses. Uh, you can find those at frankandfriendsshow.com/store. All right. I guess now I've got. I don't know what I'll do with this second mug. I'll just put it over here until the end, and then I can pretend I'm, I'm pulling it forward again. All right. Um, that's the merch. That's the... Oh, the, the, I forgot to show the, the... You haven't seen this yet. Oh, this is wow. the new... Um, at least Bruce called this a bunny hug, which apparently is a... I, I know. But it's a Canadian <laughs> term for some kind of cozy oh, sweatshirt. That's cool. And this one is super cozy. And I, like I think that. she was pointing out that the inside of it is like yeah. bunny furs. Yeah. Is, yeah, my wife had one with the old logo, and um, she still wears it. Uh, so I thought, well, maybe if I get one with the with the new logo, she can steal it when she wants. It's not real bunnies, so just no cool and jets. Although I did tell her about eating real lamb, and then I realized as I'm get the words out of my mouth, you know how we had leg of lamb. Uh, I actually said, <gasps> "Does that offend you?" Because I don't know. Yeah, you know, people get offended by by meats. Uh, I, I don't. But some other, by me. Some, there, that could be the title of the show. Actually, it would be better to be that, well, but you're not offended by meat, so. No, because I'm alcohol based. So, you know. <laughs> I'm sure those tie together somehow. I, I think they may. I think they, I think they may. Yeah. Well, speaking of then meats, the reason my friend. Um, Bean, especially, and he's my most loyal listener. I do appreciate him very much. Hey, Bean. Uh, to the point where I got a message on Facebook from a, an old, old, old girlfriend of Bean. Bean might not even remember that he dated this girl, but um, yeah, I've had those. back in the in DC days, uh, this girl, Kim Leslie, and Bean, we all thought they were going to end up getting married, but they both found other people. And um, Kim then moved to Nashville and became a famous radio uh presenter, okay. uh, morning host, whatever you call her, in Nashville. Well, she sent me a message on Facebook wondering, are you going to continue doing the, pro the podcast? Because I have a new part-time job. She wants to know, are you going to continue doing the podcast? And I wrote back, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, I didn't know Kim Leslie even listened to the podcast. In fact, if you do, Kim, um, this is your clue now to uh, acknowledge that you're hearing this. Or she just still cares for Bean. Because when I had uh, mm. that lull uh, during the bad weather and no co-hosts, uh, Bean would write to me, are you alive? <laughs> the only way I know you're alive is when you post a podcast. So um, maybe Kim is looking out for Bean, right? To make sure that I keep the podcast going so that Bean can hear it. Okay. But wow. then I go and I talk about the meats. 
And and poor Bean, as much as I love him as a friend, he does get offended by the meats. Okay. So, um, sorry about the lamb references in the last show. Uh, but he likes live animals, you know, because he, yeah. he's, anything he's had as a pet, he can't eat. So he's had, well, uh, any number of, you know, spiders and weird pets, but he's had dogs, of course, cats, um, pigs, multiple pigs, including a pig named Ham Sandwich or Ham Sandwich. <laughs> he had a goat named, I think, Habibi or whatever is, um, um, it's like a sweetheart name in it's Arabic. Arabic. Yeah. Yeah. My, my grandparents were Ar from uh, the Middle East. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So Habibi means something to you? Yeah. It, it's, it's like a term of endearment. It's like, you know, dear one or Habibi. Would yeah. your grandparents be meat offended if they heard that the goat's name was Habibi? Oh, no. Well, they're long gone. Or does they, would they think of it as they're eating the goat, thinking, hmm, Habibi? Yes, pretty much. That, okay. B, B. <laughs> <laughs> and now, do you have dogs that's, or cats? Because I've not noticed any. Oh, there's Mo. I got Mo. Well, that's a, that's a turtle, Frank. But tortoise, it's, it's a tortoise. It's a yeah. ceramic tortoise. Can't, can't but, swim. No, no. Okay. He's uh, he's not ceramic. It's very very he's chill. He's freeze dried. He, <laughs> okay. That's I'll, I'll I'll give you the link to watch the episode where I tell the story about how poor Mo died and became freeze dried. But that because that's a whole that's a whole issue. <laughs> I want to hear that. Get into it another time. But um, no, I don't have any any current pets. I've got my critters out back. On Easter morning, I look outside and there's a bunny right out the window. And I, in fact, I put my phone on uh, 15 times magnification and took a picture of the Easter bunny out my window. Okay. I love the critters. I love the animals. I love the hawks that eat the mice. Um, I love all of that. Uh, Bean, though, had, when he lived in um, California, had a cow named, um, oh, I forgot the cow. Hay. The cow's name was Hay. The donkey's name... I, uh, maybe the donkey's name was Hay. I used to know all the names. H-A-Y or H-E-Y? Good question. It's, it's a difference between, you know. Very good question. I believe it was H-E-Y. Yeah. But, but he loved them. <laughs> and he would go out there and feed them and muck the stalls and take care of the donkey. Happy. The donkey's name was Happy okay. because when he had the donkey neutered, he brought Happy's um, uh, prizes in a mason jar to work. And everyone was uh, grossly lit out by it except me. I thought, well, that was an interesting science experiment. Now... I don't have pets currently, but I, I did something. Uh, I thought about something the other day. I uh, like when, when I'm around other people's pets. Like yeah. if I'm around a cat, yeah. I, I for some reason I always want to make. I'll, I'll like get in its face and go. Meow, meow. Are you checking to see? If well, you... I, I want to see how they react, and, and I'll do the same with dogs. Like I'll play with a dog and I go arr, arr, like that. But then the other day I was that thinking... That sounds threatening to a dog. I'm not, I don't know if I... Well, that, it depends on the dog, but yeah. I, st I started thinking about this. I thought, well, I'm just, I think I'm just making random sounds, but it occurred to me one day, what if I'm like inadvertently cursing at this animal in its language? That's right. You're a, you're and the, don't realize it. You're I the mean, bad Dr. Doolittle is what well, you are. What if, you know, what if like from, from the cat's perspective, I'm calling him a jerk? This sounds very, <laughs> very possible. I mean... And th maybe that's why cats act the way they do, because we think we're just playing with them, but we're calling them jerks or whatever, and that's why they stick How, their butt in your face. Do you, you know? do that to babies? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, of course, I talk baby talk with, you know, in front of a baby if it's not mine. Uh, see, I, hmm. I don't know. I, maybe, it's, maybe I'm strange. Maybe I'm the exception. But I prefer, when I'm speaking to my children when they were little and to my grandchildren now, to use... A uh, very crisp diction and articulation, because I'm not going to tolerate it if they're not going to speak back to me in that way. Well, that's a good. That, that's the scholar bowl host, <laughs> you think. It's, you know, you, you, you're you're giving your grandchildren lightning round questions, too, well, aren't you? Yes, and but also, <laughs> I'll, I'll, and we'll talk about grandson Artie, who's the oldest of them, in a moment, because his birthday was the other day. But um, he uh, was the quickest to pick up on the diction, and I don't think it was anything I had to do with it, other than his mother, because she was brought up that way. She brought him up that way, but it backfired on them when he learned how, at a very, very young age, to operate the Amazon Alexa, ah. including buying stuff ah. uh, and ha that was delivered to the dad's work, you know, like $200, $300 worth of sporting goods equipment, which we have no idea how he did it because it doesn't matter. He probably got a prompt from the machine and was told yes, it just yeah. answered yes. But um, yeah, he can tell it to play a song. He can do all these different things that he wants it to do. Different sound effects. He wants to hear. He wants to, he wants to go to bed to hear um, uh, thunderstorms. Yeah, no problem. He can handle that. That's really cool. He wants to hear Disney tunes played by the piano guys, instrumental. And yeah, he's got it all. <laughs> but you know, so I, I have a neighbor cat that I occasionally cat sit. 
Okay. Have I told you about Louis? No, no. No, but when I speak to Louis, I speak to Louis um, as if he were a grown human. Um, but Louis and I have a adversarial re relationship. I mean, I go and I feed him and I I'm pl play with him, but then he tries to attack me and take a bite out of my leg when I'm leaving. Okay. So I have to leave backwards. <laughs> or more likely uh, send the toy scurrying the other way and try to get out the door make your break <laughs> before he does uh yeah because he um and even now you know when they when uh his owners are home they will let him roam um and he doesn't go far he goes he comes over here basically when he goes across the street and kills a bird which they don't believe that i saw it with my own eyes <laughs> but they don't believe me because uh, he was doing playing with the bird uh, this still live bird the same way he plays with the feather toy that we've trained him to play with on a fishing pole well he uh, will still stalk me in the yard while I'm gardening it's when I've got shorts on and it's hot out and he will come up and do the ah and with his two claws and his head t and sideways and, ah, and oh, bite, wow. claws me and bites me at the same time on the on the calf so <laughs> I mean, I don't know what I'm going to, I mean, it's the thing I, what if I said to provoke him? I didn't go, <laughs> I said, Louie, I see you. Careful, Louie. That kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't know. So you, but would you, all right, you're at a, uh, you're at a farm. You're, no, you're at, you're at a farm. You're just along the side of the road. There's millions of cows. We pass by cows every time. Do you moo at the cows? Uh, if, if I'm in proximity to a cow, like How? face to face, I'm like, <laughs> or something like that. Have you gone to the zoo lately? Uh, yeah, we went to the zoo last year. All right, um, don't see zebra. I don't know what. Well, I don't know what zebras. I don't say. know either. That's why I first one I thought of to ask. Um, elephant, because they look cool. They don't have to make noise. Yeah, no, they probably don't make noise because yeah. that would attract the lions. True. Elephant. Um, I, I, well, I can't do a good elephant noise, but um, so I don't really interact with them. <laughs> what am I missing out? <laughs> Let's see. Talk to the animals. Oh. Learn their languages. <laughs> elephant and cheetah. Uh, rhinoceros and I can look up the Imposterous. Can, that's um, Wizard of Oz, I think. What's or that? no, is it? I was going to look that, up the lyrics to. Uh, that was from the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, Rhinoceros, uh, Imposterous. Right? From uh, the I'm the King of the Jungle. The, yeah, the King of the yeah. lyrics. Uh, Boy, talked, we've really ran, we, we this, just covered a lot of. I love already. This it. Is no, great. no, Doctor Doolittle was my favorite movie as a child. Really? Okay. I played Doctor Doolittle in a little pageant at the library because I had a multicolored laser like Haywood Hale Brun. This is a test to see if anyone gets the Haywood Hale Brune reference. Lindsay Nelson? Okay. I anyway, I had one of those blazers. And um, I wore that because I thought it looked Dr. Doolittle-y. And I had a hand puppet of a parrot. And I did the whole bit where I pretended that the parrot was my Dr. Doolittle translator because the parrot could speak okay. English and all the animal languages and uh, taught them, therefore, to, um, to Dr. Doolittle. All right. So, Were you one of the Dewey Decimal players there at the library? Was that whoa, the name of the troupe? That's good. Wouldn't that have been a good name? That's for... a great name. Because <laughs> I did get a job at the library eventually as a page, and I had to put refile the books using the Dewey Decimal system. What a great job to, at a library, a page. See, this is, you're on t you're on fire today. I will tell you what, man. It's all right. Okay. Uh, can you chat to a chimp in chimpanzee? Talking to a tiger, chatting to a cheetah. What a neat achievement that would be. How about this? Can you study elephant, eagle, buffalo, and beagle, alligator, guinea pig, and flea? What do you got? You got any sounds for these? Well, no. Well, first of all, I, I can't. I have to like put oh. on the oh here you can old man glasses. Take, go ahead. You can, you can take it yourself. Yeah, I, I no really. I it, my interactions are pretty much limited to cats and dogs. <laughs> the simple, the core animals. Um, you, you're getting a lot more exotic than, than all right. I just about birds. How about the birds? Do you ever listen to the birds out um, there? I don't really imitate the bird. No, yeah. The, my wife and I heard a bird the other day and we were trying to imitate its call mm -hmm. and I think it was like a uh, sweet shirt sweet shirt something like that, that I've heard that one yeah I don't I, know what that is well there's an app uh, from Cornell University yeah and, yeah 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 and uh, you you let it access your microphone and it's basically a Shazam of birds mm -hmm. and you just you hold it out the window or, you, or when you're outside you just activate it and it records you know well, I mean, you can record as long as you want I, I usually get bored with it after about 20 or 30 seconds um, but it it identifies the chirping and the wow. noises the bird calls that it hears including it doesn't matter it can, there can be 20 of them happening at once it's able somehow to sift through and sort wow. out and give you a list of 20 birds that are allegedly within earshot of where you are that's amazing I know. I know. So it's like the Shazam of birds. Technology. I thought it was good. So um, you, you woof at dogs, you mew at cats. Goldfish? Yeah, we just stare at each other. Okay. 
<laughs> and stick your head in the tank and go. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> no, don't do that. But that's good. No, I'm gl- I, I, I am. You notice that I qualify when you asked me if I did that with babies. I said not. I said only with unless it's my with my kids. I didn't do baby okay. talk. Uh, other, other people's, people's kids. kids, I'll corrupt them and, and, right. and, and impede their progress. Okay. I don't care. <laughs> Well, I think one, one visitor doing it isn't going to really affect yeah, them that much. I, I don't care if They'll I think their development or not. I, <laughs> it's not, my, not my kid. I don't care. Because <laughs> I'm not, I mean, so maybe, maybe I don't know. I just, it seems like talking, woofing at a dog, you know, when you get into that whole alpha, uh, somebody's got to be the alpha with the dog, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So I wonder if, if you're given, the, like you said, given the wrong command, you could make yourself the beta or worse yet. Yeah. There's no telling what we've been communicating to animals. Oh, that's right. Anyway, I mentioned Artie. <laughs> Artie um, is my oldest grandson, and they say that uh, he and I are, have a lot in common. Okay. So I did a bit on the radio where I said, uh, my grandson Artie and I have a lot in common, which means he also likes hearing his name announced. So <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, Artie. <laughs> yeah. How that old was is funny. he? Ten. Oh, okay. That's great. Ten. That's great age. Um, and my wife is looking through the Amazon, and we're trying to figure out what are we going to send him for his birthday. You know, he lives 500 miles away, and, you know, we don't get to see him maybe a couple times a year. And... Um, so we're trying to think of things, and she's just calling out different. So we decided, after many years of experience giving not that great gifts, that we've kind of settled on anything that's in the stem line. Okay. You yeah. know, like the their Christmas gift. There's three boys, two girls, and the th- so for the three boys, we give them kind of this combination Christmas gift, which now we've done two years in a row. So all we had to do is renew the subscription to Mark Rober's um, uh, Crunch Labs. Okay. I'm familiar with Mark Rober. He's a popular YouTuber. And he's a former like NASA engineer. Wow! Okay. And he, uh, but he makes these kid things for kids where every month they get a box oh. in the mail, and it's a they have to watch the YouTube video, so it helps him. But it, he explains the science behind whatever it is they're building. That's great. And sometimes it's something as simple as a little uh, soccer game that they're putting together out of cardboard or and plastic. But he's explaining the the idea under it, the mechanism under it that randomly shoots the, the ball out from a different slot every time. And that's kind of cool. So they made a kaleidoscope the other day. They've done lots of these. Well, as we're looking at different STEM toys for Artie, my wife is just reading them off. And then National Geographic has a bunch of toys where they've slapped their brand on things. And she says, well, here's one. <laughs> She's kind of laughing. It's a kid metal detector. And I said, that's it. Mm. We got to get him a kid metal detector. And she's like, what are you, those are for old men. I'm like, well, they're, they're stereotyped to be for old men, but I have a new theory that when you get to be an old man, you really are trying to do the things you wanted to have done as a kid. So it's not that old men are associated with metal detectors, it's that they have the time and the money to buy a metal detector that they would have done if when they were 10, had they the resources. Okay, yeah, that makes Think sense. Think about it, that makes at sense. 10, you've got the time but you don't have the resources to go buy a metal detector and go up and down the beach looking for treasure. But you've got the imagination for it, and you've got, you know, right? Yeah. So yeah. when you finally get to be, you know, 65, and you're like, you know what I never had when I was 10 was a metal detector. <laughs> so you finally go and you get yourself one. Well, do you have a metal detector? I do not. Okay. I'm, I'm not sorry, yet. go ahead. Well, go ahead. But maybe when I'm old enough yeah, and I have the resources, <laughs> I'm going to get one when I have enough money. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. <laughs> so uh, we ordered the kid metal detector for him. Awesome. And it arrives. So it's his birthday, and I'm watching on FaceTime. As he opens the gift, first of all, he's eaten his um, his huge slab of cookies and cream ice cream cake, which I think has zero cake in it. It's just a wedge of ice cream with uh, some frosting on it. Yeah. And he's enjoying that. And then here comes the gift. So really, he just did damage on packaging. They just open it up. And, and I'm watching him as he's trying to figure out what it is. And his, uh, I took a snapshot, a screen grab, as he realizes what it is, and his eyes go wild, a genuine smile. He is thrilled that he's gotten a metal detector because his imagination is already rolling. Oh, this thing funny. works in four inches of water. You can, you know, so we can go to the beach and stick the thing in the water wow. and try to detect metal. Wow. Or so they say. So uh, dad goes to the battery draw- drawer and they put the nine volt battery in and immediately starts beeping. He's waving it around, <laughs> and he says, "There's a lot of must be a lot of metal under this floor because it will not stop beeping." So maybe it's nails, maybe it's something, and they're all excited. And meanwhile, then uh, Charlie wants to come on and show me the Crunch Labs that they just built that day because they're all on Easter vacation and blah blah blah. So all the all this is going on, and I say, "Look, hang up the FaceTime to my daughter, so you can make a video because 
my wife is at choir practice and she's missing this. We got to make a video for mom so she can see because she wants to see how great this is going. So we get this video and he's waving the metal detector around the floor. And then I get a call like an hour later. Dad, 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 dad. Uh, do you have the return code for the metal detector? I said, oh, what, no. is it broken? I mean, I read on the reviews that when one arrived broken, they got a replacement very easily. She's like, no, there's a problem with it. I'm like, what? It doesn't detect metal. I'm like, what do you mean it doesn't detect metal? I heard it beeping. She says, yeah, it beeps. We held it up in the air and it was beeping the same in the air as it was at the ground. I thought, well, maybe you've got metal in your air. You know, <laughs> you live close to the Pentagon. Right, <laughs> Who knows right. what's in the air right. over there? There could be some kind of shield. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows? So, um, you know, the, so then she's like, Dad, 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 you gotta, we gotta get rid of this thing. I'm like, I'm, I'm dying. I'm disappointed. I'm so disappointed because they took it outside. I don't know what they did. Maybe they threw some quarters in the yard. That's what I was gonna do. And it just beeps the same no matter what. Maybe you have to calibrate it. That, I mean, my family, they're all smart people. Yeah, okay. You know, the, my son-in-law is very smart. They're all smart, and I guess they did. They followed the instructions. Okay. I could see them, you know, before we hung up the FaceTime, going through the instructions. And they just told me, they decided it doesn't work. So now, they're like, well, just send us the return code. I'm like, what are you talking about? Uh, Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I did not. And my daughter's like, Dad, have you never returned anything to Amazon.com before? I'm like, why... No, I haven't. Because <laughs> she apparently, I guess they buy stuff all the time and they take it back to the UPS store. Like, well, why would you take it to the UPS store? Why wouldn't you? Oh, that's the greatest deal going. I you, guess you, one you, time I took something to Whole Foods. I don't know if I was returning it. Oh, yeah, my wife. It was something my wife bought that my wife didn't want. It's like a uh, clo piece of clothing. And she said, I just took it to Whole Foods. And, and the woman, it was just a weird exchange. It's like they, they, they didn't want to. It was during um, the lockdown. Kind of not well. Thanks, supermarkets had no lockdown. <laughs> so, but she didn't want to. She didn't want to get within fifteen feet of me, much less ten or six. She, right. She's like you know like this, trying yeah. to. Get, so it was, I felt very uncomfortable, and I haven't gone back to Whole Foods since. Uh, <laughs> I was triggered at Whole Foods. But <laughs> happens all the time. Right? So. Um, <laughs> So she's go, tell, talking me through the process, and I'm, and I'm on the phone. Meanwhile, my wife is calling on the other line, I'd, and I don't want to tell her yet that the, the metal detector is de defective, and, and it's all this business. So I'm on the Amazon, and I just start clicking things, and it t prompts me very quickly through the steps. Why are you returning this item? I put, does not work. You know, what's wrong with it? Does or not like metal defector. Come on. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That had, was good. Had, couldn't had to had to say that. That okay. might be the title of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Metal defector. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, so all you know, all the going through the whole bit, and, and I'm able to send her. I ended up sending her the code apparently three times because I wasn't aware of what I was doing. She's like, "Okay, Dad, I got it. All right, I'm, I'm going to send it now. No, I already got it, Dad. <laughs> and it's just a QR code, and they can take the thing. No packaging. Yes. Yes. You, so. Oh yeah, we do that all the time. Why? Well, because, well, my, my wife sometimes buys clothing yes. from just anywhere, yeah. like via Amazon. All right. And sometimes it doesn't fit, mm -hmm. so she'll send it back. And she'll give, and that's my job. She'll say, just take this to the UPS store. You don't have to box it up. You just have to print out the return code. Okay, that must be new because last yeah. time I returned, I said Whole Foods was an option. I remember seeing that Kohl's, you used to be able to take it to Kohl's. Okay, yeah, yeah. But I didn't know about UPS store. Yeah. And there's a list. There was a list of yeah. you, you can take. And she lives in, like I said, in the near D.C. So there's all sorts of other options that don't exist in Tennessee. Yeah. You know, you can take it to the Amazon mailbox or whatever. I, I, whatever. Uh, yeah. It, it's the, I'm telling you, for returning things, it's the greatest system in the world. And they're, it's easy to return. Yeah, so easy, yeah. Because I was worried that they weren't going to take it back. No, or did they read? Did they get a new or a replacement detector? Are they going to get a one that I would like them to? But my daughter was giving me the wait and see, Dad okay. lecture. So that means no. I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know. I was ready. I wanted to detect some metal with him this summer. I was excited yeah. about it because some of the stuff I've dug up in this backyard is very strange and very mysterious. Like the well, Catherine Frady calls it the murder rug. It was just. <laughs> It was just a bathroom uh, rug that was buried, you know, about six inches to a foot deep in the backyard. And oh. I, I think, I, my theory is that they wrapped up a dead 
pet maybe in mm-hmm. it or some other thing and buried it, or I don't know why they buried that it. That makes sense. That's what but, I was thinking. But I didn't find any any bones or anything. Yeah, or remains. This is a, you need to get Doctor Bass. Did you have you not asked Doctor Bass like why why is this <laughs> why is there a rug in the backyard? <laughs> like he has nothing better to do. <laughs> He would tell me to go find the bones. He doesn't care. <laughs> That's true. He's like, go find the go get, bring me a bone. I'm a bone doctor, yeah. not a rug doctor. Uh, I, I, you know, I was, I was I was optimistic about your grandson having the metal detector because very, if he gets it out of his system now, we won't yeah. have another old man with a metal, metal detector, detector in fifty years. That's right, because he's yeah. 10. I, I, my wife and I actually had this conversation. We went camping about a week and a half ago. We're walking along the shore of the lake, yeah. and I said, if you ever hear me say the words, I want to get a metal detector, just hit me over the head <laughs> just i don't want to be metal detector guy i just i, I, I but how about if you were 10 would you oh i would have loved it when i was 10 okay absolutely absolutely all right see now some people they go and they find the civil war stuff no that is cool i it's it i don't know what it is i it, it's not that i don't think i mean it's if he cool. showed up at manassas battlefield with the metal detector they probably would kick him out they probably wouldn't let him that, that's true yeah you can't mess with us yeah you? I, I, I think what bothers me about the metal detector isn't like the nature of it. I think it's cool to look for metal stuff. It's just it's just associated with old men, and yeah. I'm and I'm fighting that every step okay. of the way. I, I don't I don't want to do old man things yet. <laughs> I have a weed whacker that looks suspiciously like a metal detector. <laughs> you know they should combine though, like the, a, a metal detector. You know, like you you cut your weeds and and look for treasure. That would be, it, it would be it would, it'd be a great motivator to do yard work. Yes. I'm in all in favor. Oh, man. Well, you We're mentioned just, uh, Dear Dr. Patent Bass. Patent pending. You mentioned Dear Dr. Bass, and, of course, you can buy his books and his autographed merchandise at BoneZones.com. Don't forget the S. Uh, maybe get one of these Body Farm T-shirts. Uh, maybe take it and bury it in the backyard, and years from now, wait, <laughs> let someone uh, dig it up and think they're onto something. Yeah. <laughs> you can get, maybe take one of these skulls. and I mean, imagine metal, if I had buried this. Imagine okay. if I took this skull, which, of course, it's too expensive to actually Ooh, do this. I haven't seen this. What is oh, this? Oh, I thought I had shown you the, I don't, the, this is a. No, I haven't seen that. I'm not sure what it's made of. It may have, it looks silver, but I don't know that it has any actual metal it's in it. It's autographed by Dr. Bass. Across the is super. Is that his real signature, or is uh, that yeah. one of those production? No, sig- no, no. That's his no. actual signature. I have this picture wow. uh, somewhere. I may have to find it and put it on um, for you and show it to you. Um, that might be. You know, that's very. Hef- I don't think it's, it's very hefty. It's, it's a paperweight. It's just okay. Well, that, that by nature. I don't yeah. think it's metal, though. I think it's um, either resin or just some other filled with something heavy, stone or some other yeah. thing. I imagine. I mean, if I had a metal detector, I could tell you if there's any metal in it. But it's signed across the superorbital ridge, which men have and women do not. And of course, there's another bump in the back of your skull that men have that women do not. Yeah. In case you ever want to. Is that the xiphoid process? Is that what that's um, called? Uh, it has a this bump that my finger's on right here has yeah. a different name. Okay. Um, protuberance, something protuberance. Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, um, you can have some fun with that. Yeah. But I was thinking that I have a picture of um, these other skulls. We have these other ones that are a little larger, not not life size, but they're resin and they're colored to look like human skulls. Okay. Uh, so for Halloween decorations. That's but great. they, of course, buy them, you know, by the gross. And I've got this picture of uh, Dr. Bass at Panera Bread, and they've got a dozen of these skulls out on the table, and or 11, and he's signing the 12th one so they can put it in. So I mean, just imagine going into Panera Bread one day, and there's Dr. Bass and 12 skulls, skulls on the table. <laughs> Gosh, how bad is the food here? <laughs> and you can buy those at BoneZones.com. Don't forget the S. And you can also hire me to uh, come in and give a speech about uh, the Dr. Bass and his life and career. I, I didn't tell you the one, um, I haven't seen you since I did the speech in um, the uh, Teleco Village uh, Kahiti Women's Organization. It was a smash hit. The what? Women's Organization? Uh, Kahiti. Kahiti. I thought you said K- Tahiti. Okay. It does sound like that, but it's K-A-H-I-T-E. Okay, it's the name of the golf club. It's a Native American term. I'm yeah, guessing. okay. It's, it's in, at one of the golf clubs at Teleco Village. Um, and the people, so they all showed up in carts. They, none of them had the cars. They all drove in in golf carts. With their metal detectors. And, <clears throat> and as I mentioned in the last episode, um, the woman from the bereavement committee gets up there and is happy to report we had no use for the bereavement committee this month. And then I have to come on and go, how do I follow that? <laughs> I'm about to talk to you. Everyone's going to die in this presentation I'm about to give you. I'm going to show you decomposing corpses. And you're applauding that no one died. 
Oh. You're the, I'm the wrong guy for this. Oh, you, you, I love it. You, you've that, chosen poorly, ladies. <laughs> that is great. I love that. <clears throat> so, oh, that's fun. But I can come give one of those speeches. I got the cremation lecture ready. I'm working on the Big Bopper lecture. I got the obviously the the origins, the history of the body farm. That oh, one's ready. I um, love that stuff. I want to. I, yeah. I want to. Let me know when you're doing. Th those. Well, you can hire me to come do it, uh, or you can help us book a room and sell tickets. Well, I mean, we'll do it. Okay. I, mean, I think, I mean, it's, the idea is, you know, we're in the pro bonezones.com. Don't forget the S. We're trying to sell things. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Make some money. But yeah, happy to have you. I, I think that's happy fascinating. Yeah, it's good stuff. Mm. Okay. Well, um, another celebrity that I uh, got to hang out with recently was uh, a professional wrestler, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And uh, it, you mentioned to me that you're not a big um, fan of professional wrestling, and I would not consider myself to be a huge fan either, and I'll explain. But have uh, you heard of Steamboat any? I, I have not. I have not heard that name. Oh, okay. If I said name a professional wrestler. Um, I, I know some of the legendary that's ones. That's who we're talking about. Name, name them. Okay. Uh, okay, well, there's like The Rock, the obviously. Rock. Okay. And uh, uh, Nature Boy Ric Flair. Boom. Great. Um you know, I grew up in Memphis, so where Jerry Lawler, that's an old school Yeah, all right. Name. He was uh, involved with Andy uh, Kaufman. Andy Kaufman, Kaufman think, and that yeah. slapping incident on Letterman. Yeah. yeah so, but I, I know some of the... The history. Uh, uh, who's the woo guy? Who's that guy? Um, I, I don't know. Is that Hulk Hogan? No, there is. He, Hulk Hogan did that too, but... Uh, Hulk Hogan was, was listen, Steve brother. Austin, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Okay. Maybe? Is that... I don't know. Good, I, this I is good. I don't know. I really don't no, know. No, these are fine. These are fine. I mean, because <clears> when um, the... Uh, what Ricky was on... WrestleMania three, it was wow. Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant. So he's from that era. Yeah. Okay. Like eighties, okay. nineties. Okay. okay. So in the in the nineties, they he um, they really just called him the Dragon, and he started had to learn how to breathe fire. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, it was Vince McMahon said, "We're going to Steamboat. You're going to learn how to breathe fire." <laughs> so they had to find someone to teach him the fire breathing trick. And, um, and the reason I know all of this is, well, first of all, I met him at the Tennessee Valley Fair last year and he wasn't there to as do anything it's not like he was working the fair except that he was invited to come judge the fair food throwdown and i have been the mc for the fair food throwdown many many times over the past 10 years and that is uh the fair vendors the carnies if you will the, but the food booths will bring their best funnel cake their best corn dog lemonade pizza uh novelty item fried, deep fried something, new fair item, a bunch of different categories, lots of categories so that there'll be lots of winners. Sure. Right. Okay. Right. Right. And then they display these banners at their, we've got the best lemonade, we've got the best iced tea, we've got the best candy apple, the best funnel cake, yada, da, 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 da. Um, and I've been the MC of that. Well, this year they were looking for judges and uh, they knew somebody who knew somebody, Houston Vandergriff, who was able, who knows. I know Houston Vandergriff. You know, everyone, okay, then boom. Houston volunteers at the <clears throat> food stage every year. Awesome. And he assists me and assists Chef Rachel Reagan with the, these festivals, these uh, contests. So Houston had encountered Ricky the Dragon Steamboat somewhere along the way. <laughs> at a, I think an autograph signing convention, a fanboy type expo. Right. And... Um, Steamboat is a very kind and generous person, so he and Houston stayed in touch. Okay, good. So Houston contacts uh, Steamboat, and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat invites him, do you want to come t judge these foods? Or maybe it was the donut contest. I don't know. It might have been the... I may have this conflated, because I did two contests this year. So one of them, I have to look back at the photos, Steamboat is judging either the donut contest or the fried food contest, but... Loved it so much, he wants to come back and do both next year. Oh, great. Great experience. Everybody loves the guy. And I just thought, this guy's great. I, got, I should interview him on my TV show. Because he's, you know, we'll get, we'll get views maybe. He's famous, right? <laughs> okay. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how many people watching PBS on the last Wednesday of the night, at, well, last Wednesday of the month at midnight are going to be excited. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna probably, can you imagine the strongly worded letters we're going to get from the yeah. PBS people? <laughs> That's your demographic right there. How dare you besmirch the public broadcasting system with some obviously fake wrestling? Don't you know that it's yeah. professional wrestling is fake? You know? Yeah. Of course we know. Yeah, duh. I mean, Rick, we, that, that was part of the interview. The best part of the interview is we talked about how he and Randy Macho Man Savage choreographed what is considered to be the greatest match in, in the history of WrestleMania. And it was the one with, um, the, you know, it was Hulk and Andre the Giant. And then the second card, on the second name, on the la next to last fight was um, 
Macho Man Savage versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And that's considered to be so brilliant. And he talked me through the whole thing. It, it, it was fascinating. Wow. You know, so all those guys, Rowdy Roddy Piper and, and uh, Iron Sheik and George the Animal yeah. Steel, yeah. they all turn up in the course of this interview. Uh, and I found it just delightful. And the guys on the crew, they're all just wide-eyed because they're all the right age also to be wrestling fans. Right, right. And a bunch of guys, and now in their 30s now, I guess, and some of them even older, are excited about it. Well, Dragon shows up and he has a, a replica of the belt that he'd won in that WrestleMania. He didn't get to keep it, but he has it, a repli exact replica of it. So we're showing that. And he brought in the different toys with his image on them from over the years. He's got this one that's like a Stretch Armstrong. Wow. There's other ones that are different, you know, bendable like G.I. Joe type figures. And then at the end, he whips out a stack of photos and says, would anyone like an autograph? Because I brought pictures. Okay. I'll, I, I don't, yeah, I don't even know if I recognize <coughs> this guy. But. Okay. Okay. So he, and, and he had enough. I was worried that he wasn't going to have enough for everybody on the crew. So I told him, do everyone else first, because I know I'll see him again. I'm, I'm confident that I will see him again if, <clears throat> either before the Tennessee Valley Fair or at the Tennessee Valley Fair. Um, I said, just make sure all these other guys get theirs, because you can't do a show without the crew. You know, I'm the host of the show, but you take care of the crew. So um, he signs all this for uh, me. And then I tell him, and he signs this other one. This is like his, um, like in the 90s, he had to do the whole dragon outfit with... Um, you know, all this get up and he would breathe fire, all this costuming. But Free said, for me, he wanted me to get like the old school, like the original. This is what he looked like back, you know, when yeah, he was starting yeah. out. Um, and he wrote, To Frank, thanks for the interview, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Hall of Fame, That's cool. 2009. Very cool. You know, if your name is already Ricky Steamboat, do you need a nickname on top of that? Well, it's interesting because his actual name is Ricky Blood. And <laughs> is it really? Yeah, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. Why so, didn't he just keep that? Because Ricky Blood is a heel name, and, and they decided he was oh, going to be okay. a baby face. Okay. Heel is bad guy. Baby I, face is good guy. I actually knew that. Oh. I, I have a couple of friends who used to wrestle at sort of the local regional level. Mm -hmm. and, and I will tell you this. And here's what I'll, you know, professional wrestling, scripted. Choreographed. Choreographed, but not fake. I mean, when those you, you try jumping off a turnbuckle and landing on your back yeah. on a table, that's not it fake. Hurts. They right. are taking these guys. My friends, I mean, they've got they've had joint replacements yeah. and arthritis, and they're in just you know, it it takes a toll. Well, Ricky described the training when he went to professional wrestling school. Um, he said there were 16 guys at first in his class, and a week later there were only four of them left. I believe it. And it, they were in a basement of a 20-story building, and they had to run, do reps up and down all 21 flights of stairs. And then they had to pick up one of the other guys and carry him 21 flights of stairs mm -hmm. up. And then, and then they would run back down, and, and, the other, and the other one had to carry the guy up. So that's, that's what they had to... Just that was their training. The Iron Sheik was their teacher, and he's put him through these paces. I mean, you got to watch this interview. It's not, it won't be on until the summer, and I'll be sure to tell you about it. But I mean, we're just gobsmacked with the, the amount of physical training that he does to stay in shape so that he doesn't get hurt too badly. Yes, yes. And yeah, you're right, a body slam, he says, a chore yeah, it's choreographed. His quote to me was, sure, it's choreographed, but a body slam is still a body slam. <laughs> you're still <laughs> falling, you know, seven or eight feet onto your back. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that's that's fake. Yeah, you still have to do it. Well, I don't know. Now, everything it sounds like I know a lot about wrestling, right? So, I knew very little. But back in the 80s, um, when I was working at a top 40 radio station and WrestleMania was huge, we would give away tickets and even go to be the radio sponsor at, um, like, the uh, what, I think it was Rowdy Roddy Piper versus Hulk Hogan. So WrestleMania one or two, and there's a huge big screen in the Sheraton Hotel in Washington D.C. One of these ones downtown. It might have been the one where Reagan was shot, the Hilton of the Sheraton, wherever it was. It doesn't matter. Um, massive, massive TV screens, and we've got and it's the ballroom is packed. You're trying to watch this on satellite from wherever it's taking place, and everyone's bought tickets. Then uh, we went to see a match at the Capitol Center with Hulk Hogan in person, and so I think Steamboat was on that one too. So that was, but that was it. I've seen basically these two wrestling events and maybe occasionally a little bit on TV back in those days. And I don't remember any of this stuff really that detailed. But I got a friend, my friend Tim, who lives out in California, Tim Putre. And he, like me, came up through the ranks as a radio producer. And that's how we got to know each other. Okay. Is he was producing some shows in one city and he, I was kind of had gotten a reputation in the radio biz as doing a um, for my producing the shows that I was working on, you know, the old uh, WAVA, Donna Mike, and KROQ, Kevin and Bean, who I've talked about Bean all the time. So 
Tim and I would change, exchange notes and ideas and we'd just have conversations. And I knew that he liked wrestling. So I called him up. I said, you know, actually I sent him a screen grab of this message, uh, voicemail message from Ricky Streamboat because I knew it would get, he'd bite. I knew he would call back immediately like, what? How did you get a voicemail from Ricky Steamboat? Like, well, let me tell you. And I basically told him what I've told you so far. This met him at the fair. I'm going to interview him on TV. I'm not really sure what I'm going to talk to him about. And Tim goes into producer mode. And he starts telling me that about the greatest WrestleMania match. And he starts telling me about their rivalry with Ric Flair. And he starts telling me about the Anderson brothers rubbed his face with sandpaper. And he starts telling me... <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what this is. I'm just, he's going through, <laughs> you know, really <laughs> arcane okay. minutia of, re, of this wrestling. <laughs> and then he starts sending me emails and texts me links of things. He says, you need to re read this article. You need to watch this video. You need to watch this interview. So in the days prior to my interview with him, I have got a professional producer sending me um, tons of show prep. And I'm, I'm sitting there, and I felt, I, this is great, you know? And I, I kind of had this flashback to when I used to do it, and you, never, you wondered if the host ever actually looked at the material you sent them. Yeah. You know, what, obviously, I'm, I'm not that guy. I have zero confidence, zero uh, uh, going into this interview. I'm, I know that he can talk. I've done a quick phone interview with Ricky, um, kind of a pre-interview. Until his wife needed him. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Well, she had foot surgery, and he's really helped, you know, she needed something, so he, like that minute, so he had to hang up and go. But I'm getting all this, I, so I do the interview, and I'm like, you know, it went well. You know, I made a video uh, while I'm after the show, while he's signing my autograph, and I told him, I said, I gotta admit to you that it was my friend Tim <laughs> who told me about this, and he's like, well, let me sign a picture for Tim! Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's, that's for my buddy Tim, so he's, that's he's cool. in California, but I, I'm hoping that he'll, uh, next time he's on the East Coast, I can meet up with him or I'll just mail it. But he, he said to hang on to it. He might be coming this way. Okay, that, that's cool. That's you know, like, if I had gotten to interview Ricky Steamboat, you know what I would have asked him about? Okay, what? Metal detecting. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to throw him off. What, what, who is this guy? Why is he asking me about Well, he's metal? like 71. Is he really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. And, so I don't know how, I, I never heard that name. I, I know as many I've heard of. Quite a few wrestlers never heard that name until you and I talked about it. Well, I got the name Steamboat. Apparently, there was a wrestler. Wherever he went in Florida, it was the Graham, somebody Graham was the, the promoter in, in Florida. And this guy Graham says to him, well, Rick, you can't be Ricky Blood because that's a heel. Um, but I used to have a guy named Sammy Steamboat who's retired now, and he okay. was Hawaiian, and uh, Ricky is half Japanese. Okay. So half white, half Japanese, which creates a vaguely Hawaiian Polynesian look. Okay. And he says, I'm gonna call you, I'm gonna pretend you're the nephew of Sammy Steamboat, and you're gonna be Ricky Steamboat, <laughs> and you're gonna be tag team partner with my son, somebody Graham, because in the old days, uh, Graham and Steamboat were a tag team combination, and I'm bringing it back. Okay. You know, it's the next generation of Steamboat and Graham. And of course, it was a big deal in Florida. People loved it. Sammy Steamboat wrote him a letter saying, I'm so glad that you have honored my name <laughs> and kept it alive okay. in the industry. All right. <laughs> glad to know the Steamboat name is alive and well. I, say, I thought it was a sub shop. There used to be a steamboat. Yeah, steamboat sub. Oh, yeah. They, they, made, they made good subs. Is that not around anymore? No. Uh, you know who owned it? was another PBS uh, personality. Ava Barber had the franchise uh, for the one in Powell, maybe? Did the, Ava Barber used to do a show in Pigeon Forge? Probably. She would have been on Did the she Lawrence. she used to be on the Lawrence? Okay. Yeah. In, in Pigeon Forge, when I first moved to this area about 30 years ago, uh, Dick Dale and Ava Barber they were big starred deal. in a show at Memories Theater in Pigeon it. Forge or something like that. I don't really know much about them. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can tell you quite a bit if you'd like. I, <laughs> yeah. uh, I did a pledge drive with her one oh, okay. time. And um, there's, a, I think, a whole episode where I tell the story of how I ran into the guy who composed the song Spooky. And I'm trying to make conversation with him. And not the, he, well, he, I said, oh, Dennis Yost, Classics 4. He's like, well, yeah, they turned it into a pop song. I mean, I wrote it as a jazz instrumental, but it's the same tune. Oh, wow. Okay. And it's, he's, on the, he's on the record. I mean, it's, you can look at him. He's the songwriter or the composer, not the lyricist. Um, and his name was uh, Harry Middlebrooks. So I'm talking to Harry Middlebrooks, and I mentioned I'm trying to just make conversation with him. We're trying to kill. I got an hour to kill before a concert, 
And he's telling me about Lawrence Welk's show. He's telling me about playing jazz piano in the, in the valley out in California. And I said, oh, you probably know Ava Barber. And he's like, Ava Barber? I'd love to talk to Ava Barber. Why don't you have Ava Barber call me? <laughs> I'm like, great. What have I got myself into now? I met Ava Barber one time <laughs> seven years ago. And, and now, now you're, her, you're her social secretary. <laughs> <something like. laughs> so, but I'm also a bit of a snoop from my years as a radio producer. So I dig up Ava Barber's phone number somehow and I call her up and you're not going to believe this, but some crazy old guy named Harry Middlebrooks wants to talk to you. Harry Middlebrooks? I'd love to talk to Harry Middlebrooks. You have Harry Middlebrooks call me. Like, apparently that's how show business happened yeah. back in those days. You should introduce her to Ricky Steamboat. You know, just, you just, just connect everybody. You just speak the name. It's like the, the power of God the Creator. You speak it and it becomes a reality. It's like unbelievable. You know, this, this guy says to me, have, have Ava call me. And Ava says, have Harry call me. I'm like, well, one of you is going to have to call. Uh, the yeah, other one of you's got to give. I want out of this transaction. Because uh, that last thing, next thing I could picture was me doing a conference call. Miss Barber, I have Mr. Middlebrook on line yeah. two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Middlebrook, I have Miss Barber on line one. <laughs> uh, that'll teach you. <sighs> I know, I know. All right. Well, um, I know you've got uh, business to attend to before it gets too much later. Um, you got a call coming up in about thirteen yeah, minutes. Yeah, I, I need to get out of here in a couple of minutes. All right. So we'll uh, we'll probably wrap it there. Um, mm. I think that's everything on the main things on my list. But you did mention, um, I could probably get this one out of the way, uh, New York Times crossword puzzle. Are you addicted to it like I am? No, I, I, I subscribe to the New York Times games. On Me the, too. I have the app, and I do the crossword most days. But you pay the money to I, have I pay, access to the I big... I pay the $6 a month or whatever it is. Okay. For, I, for, I, don't, I pay it in a lump sum for per year, but I guess it works out to about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, uh, and I, didn't, I go in cycles with crosswords. I'll, I'll go on a jag for a while, mm -hmm. and, then every, and then I'll not play for two years, and I'll go back. Oh, okay. and, and I always remember, it, you have to get into the mindset of the crossword. It, yes. takes, it takes a few days to sort of, oh, okay, yeah, I see how they're doing this now. Right. So. Well, I mean, I, my streak is at like um, something like 2117 or 2112, some kind, of, some kind of symmetrical number, I think. Uh, that's... So basically, I've, I've had this streak going for five consecutive years. And I had a two or three year streak before that. And I missed one day. I had a, we had a, a show. I was do, producing a show, an event. And I didn't get to the crossword before midnight or 3 a.m. or whatever time the deadline was. And I lost my streak. And I was so mad. So I, I said, I'm not going to lose it again. So I, I'm going along. I'm to the well into the 2100s of the of this streak of days in a row oh, okay. of solving okay. the puzzle, which is why I mentioned. I can tell you that the martini puzzle theme was um, the other. I don't, well, the date of the puzzle I get confused. I do it the night before usually. Now, yeah. As soon as it comes online at 10 p.m., I want to do the puzzle, keep the streak alive because you never know what's going to happen. I, yeah. I got to get this important to me. Yeah. Well, I solve one of these Sunday puzzles, and it's kind of rebus, which means. If in their in their terminology, a rebus means you're squeezing multiple letters into one single square. I don't like those. They're hard. yeah, right. It takes a while to figure out that that's what it is. So it took me a while to figure it out, but I did eventually, and I squeeze the letters in, and I get the da 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 da, yeah. <laughs> which is the little jazzy music they play yeah. when you've solved the puzzle. <laughs> Well, I carry on and the rest of the week and I start seeing getting these notifications. Congratulations, your streak of three Wednesdays is a, or whatever it is, is it's multiple Wednesdays in a row. But your days in a, days in a row is only three, but oh, your Wednesdays no. in a row is, you know, several hundred. I'm like, uh, oh, uh, no. uh, they broke my streak. And I'm, I'm tapping on the thing and it shows that I've solved the puzzle. Da, 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 da. And I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm furious. Yeah. I'm ready to cancel my subscription, get my $45 <laughs> back or whatever it costs per year. Uh, and I'm just so irate. And my wife now has taken up crossword puzzling, mainly because I do it. And she's very competitive. Um, but she does it because I do it. And also, it's, you know, it's good for your brain because you have to think, like you said. You have to look at every clue and understand that they deliberately use words that could be a noun or a verb or an uh, adjective. Yes, yes. And they always twist the meaning. Yes. And that's fun for me. And I even have uh, been inspired to write Scholar's Bowl questions because of some of the arcane uh, facts that I've learned from the crossword puzzle. I'm so mad. And my wife says, well, have you written to them? Have you complained? Like, what do you mean? She said, apparently something happened to her one time and she just dashed off, you know, fil clicked on the button and complained and sent them an email and they repaired her streak. I'm like, how can they do wow, that? Wow, that's cool. So I write to them and I say, this is, I've, I filled it out correctly. It was one of your stupid rebuses. 
And then they tell you the steps. Okay, here's what you gotta do. You gotta go in there, you gotta log, not in using your app, you gotta log in on a different computer. You gotta log into your account. You have to click clear, you wipe the puzzle. Okay. I'm like, I don't know if I wanna do this. Yeah, you have to wipe out yeah, the puzzle. Yeah. And then you have to click the, like the auto solve puzzle version of it where they, where they, the computer just, you've given up, the computer just fills in the correct answers for you. And of course your streak is broken. And I think if you, even if you get a hint, I think if you, if you click on show me a hint, your streak will break. So I'm like, I can't even, I can't even. But this, the lady from the New York Times has written me these instructions. I do it. And I write back to her, okay. I did as you asked. She says, okay, I'll, uh, I'll change your blue star to a gold star and your streak will be reinstated. And next thing you know, I mean, this whole process took minutes yeah. or maybe a day at most. And, and my streak is back. It's oh, back, it's baby. Yay. I'm back, baby. That's great. I'm at 21, 12, 7, 21, 17, whatever. I don't even remember. A big, big high number. That's great. Good. Congratulations on that. But I have the pressure. Why do I put myself under this pressure? <laughs> you know what would have been hilarious if she had said, okay, to fix your streak, go to the UPS store. And, uh, <laughs> Download the return code. <laughs> Download the return code. <laughs> have you never returned anything to the New York Times before? <laughs> Is this your first time, <laughs> you plebe? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Well, on that happy note, yeah. we'll uh, wrap the episode. I uh, urge you, um, if maybe, I don't know if there's any audio books about crossword puzzling. There probably are. And you can listen to someone describe in excruciating detail the crosses <laughs> and the downs. But if you go, go to our, uh, our URL, which is audibletrial.com slash show, you can get a free 30-day membership. <laughs> A free 30 day membership to Audible, uh, which includes an MP3 download every month. You get a credit every month, including during your free month. You start paying for it at the end of 30 days or so, and uh, it'll keep going. And you can listen to all these books on the stream. You can download using your credits. Um, you just keep going, pick out the ones you like, you know, and it's a safe time. You're able to do two things at once, really. You know, you can drive, like we have a uh, car trip coming up for uh, somebody's first Holy Communion. So that's an opportunity to listen to, you can get podcasts. Our show, The Frankenfriend Show, is on Audible. Uh, you can hear it there if you wish. Uh, lots of podcasts, including a lot of exclusive content that you can only find on Audible, plus every audiobook practically in the world that you can imagine. Find it on there and go driving, go uh, gardening season is here. You pop in the old earbuds and it makes it a lot less painful if you're just half distracted, yep. Uh, when you're out there shoveling and raking and hoeing and metal detecting, and <laughs> I don't know. Can you listen to an audiobook while you're metal detecting? Can you listen to an audiobook about <laughs> metal detecting while you're actually metal detecting? Did I find something, or is that just an example from the book? I this is like me the day before Little League tryouts, or the morning of Little League tryouts. My father got so pissed at me because I'm up in my room reading a book on how to play baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Look at, I had bought it from the Scholastic. I knew that the tryouts were coming up, and I had bought a book about for looking for tips, so I could be better at the little league. I was I was horrible, but I'm reading a book at the, up to the minute, and he's like, "Why aren't you outside throwing a ball?" I'm like, because I, I, I don't know how. I got to read the book. Yeah, now I'm gonna learn how to swim <laughs> from reading a book. Anyway, right. uh, you can I don't know, but you have to hear the beeping. Well, right, you're yeah, both. no, you're good point. You got it. Yes, you're right. Because imagine if there's beeping in the audio book, that'll really throw you right, off. Right. So uh, audibletrial.com slash Frank and Friends show. And uh, if you are outside, <coughs> and uh, I hope you never, I hope no one ever buries my towel, because I can only imagine <laughs> the anxiety of having to dig this up years from now. Uh, <laughs> but I got the beach towel. We got the, have, how was your pint glass? It was, uh, I'll, I love a good pint glass. I'll, I like it. Mm. Thank you. It's got the heft that you need. Uh, yeah, it's real. And um, of course, the the mugs, the hats, the t-shirts, the bunny hug sweatshirt. Did I show that already? You did. All right. Well, I might have to put it on because I, I turned the heat down because you, I don't want to get too hot on the show. All right. I'm trying to keep an eye on the clock over here. I think we're okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I need. I'm one, to, I yeah, need to. I know, but I'm one of those guys. I'm a broadcaster. I'm like, oh, I got another four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Frank and Friends show. Please subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> I'm kind of squirming over here. It's hilarious. Uh, well, I do appreciate it. My name is Frank Murphy. I'm Mitch Moore. And we'll talk to you again next time. I still got, we just got, look at that. We still, it's still over four minutes. I know, I got to get my computer set up and all that stuff. <laughs>